Okay guys, here we go. So welcome to the first question. So the curve C has parametric equations x equals 3t minus 4 and y equals 5 minus 6 over t, where t is strictly positive. So part A, let's find the first derivative dy over dx in terms of t. So the key idea really is to think about how to differentiate these set of equations and, and rewrite them in the correct form of dy dx. A cool way is to use something known as the chain rule. And that is, is to say this, we could say let dy over dx be written in forms of dA, dt's as well. So think about, if this is algebraic fractions, we need to have a dy up here, divide by something, times something on top, times dx. And this is kind of um, a little partition. Because we work in terms of t, it's, y, it's advisable to put dt's in both. And just if you're unsure about why it's like this, if you were to cancel, if this algebraic fractions, you'll notice that dt's both cancel out. And again, you get dy over dx. So yes, and if you're going, if you're differentiating in terms of other terms like x and t, you're going to use dx or dt. Or differentiating y in terms of t, dy over dt. So that's exactly why we do it. So what is the solution here? So first things first, we cannot do dy, d, we can do dy over dt. So look at 5 minus 6 over t. We could rewrite this equation as 5 minus 6 six times t to the power negative one and in differentiating this is quite easy this would just give us firstly let's differentiate we should get well five is nothing and uh, minus 60 power negative one drop the negative one and we should get exactly positive six times t to the power negative two or six over t squared so we can write six over t squared times now as for the other expression what do we have here so Ooh, just have a look. So we've got we're differentiating x terms, so that's easy. This should give us just 3. And because it's dt of dx, this is the reciprocal. Because the first, this part here will give us dx over dt, which would just be 3. So therefore, dt over dx should be 1 over 3. It's upside down, yeah? So it'll be times 1 over 3. Okay, not bad. And that's it. Now we just simplify this, guys. So just do some cross simplification. So 6 and 3. They both go to 3, so that's once and twice. And it's just literally 2 times 1, which is 2. And t squared times 1 is t squared. And that's it, guys. Part A is complete. Let's move on. So, part B. So, the point P lies on C where t equals half. All right, cool. Find the, um, the equation of the tangent to C at the point P. Okay, so that's just a general idea. So, first things first. We're talking about a typical um, straight line equation. So y equals mx plus c will do where m is your gradient, which we have in a previous equation. dy dx is the gradient equation. And we know the value t here. So t is half. So we can say 2 over half squared is the gradient. So let's put a note there. So m equals 2 over half squared. And if you're not sure, you can literally just put down a calculator. And in doing that, you should literally get... Now, this is the easy part. So now our final uh, equation is now y equals 8x plus c. So now we just need to find the x and y coordinate to get c. And since we know the point p lies on c where t is half, we can plug in the value for half for t and then get our x and y coordinates. So let's do it. So we can say x equals 3 times half, so 3 over 2 minus 4. And y equals 5 minus 6 over half, so... 12 in other words 6 over half is just is just 12 now putting this all in the calculator i mean it's not too difficult but you know this is a calculator so better not to get wrong the first one will give us negative 5 over 2 and then the y solution should give us well negative 7 and that's it now plugging these into the gradient equation so i'm going to change color pen what do we get so we should get uh, minus 7 equals 8 times negative 5 over 2 plus c hence putting this in the calculus so making c the subject you're gonna have minus seven take away all of this term here so minus seven minus eight times minus five over two you should get 13. And voila guys that means that the final solution is going to be now the, the, the equation of tangent is going to be y equals 8x plus 13 where p is um, 8 and q is 13. Alright. Okay, here we go. Part C, guys. So show that the Cartesian equation for C, basically the above pair of equations, can be written in this format. 
where y equals ax plus b over x plus 4. And a and b are integers here. So, alright, so what does this mean? So if we look at this carefully, you can notice that there is no more t equation. Why? Because a Cartesian equation is always in the form of x and y. So this is telling us that because we're referring to c, i.e. the first pair, we need to somehow eliminate t. So it's pretty much substitute out. And that's it. Once you do that, play around, you should get this equation. So let's have a go. I'm going to take the first equation here, the x1, because I realize that the x equation can be easily rearranged by t subject. And by doing that, we can just add 4 across and divide by 3. So we can have x plus 4 all over 3, and this should give us t. Now, all you want to do is plug this back into this equation. Now, that's really it. So just to make your life a bit easy, let's try and find an expression for 6 over t here. Yeah? So the way I'll do this is firstly take the reciprocal of this equation. So we're going to have now um, 3 over x plus 4 equals... Now at this stage we just need to multiply 6 across and now we finally have 6 over t. So this should give us 3 times 6 is 18 over x plus 4 equals 6 over t. That's it guys. Now let's plug this back into the y equation. So let's do it. So we're going to have y equals 5 minus... 18 over x plus 4 and now the key idea is is just to get common denominator so everything is over x plus 4 so this 5 must be over x plus 4 and to do that just literally rewrite as 5 over 1 and multiply up and down by x plus 4 and this should give us well 5 times x plus 4 should be 5x plus 20 all over x plus 4 minus 18 over x plus 4 all right, no bad. So if you guys got this far, well done. And now finally, let's wrap it up. So now we're just subtracting. So because of the same denominator, it's all over x plus 4. And this means that 5x plus 20 minus 18, or 20 minus 18 should give us 2. So it's going to be 5x plus 2, guys. And that's it. Hope this helped, and I shall see you guys in the next question.